Hi, welcome back to the channel. How are you doing? I'm here today to do round three. This is now my third year in a row doing this video. It's the mid-year book freakout tag. I've been doing it now for three years. I don't think I've said it correctly. And the whole time, any of the times I've said it. But I just love doing this tag. I think it's such a phenomenal idea. I love looking back on um, the prior years and seeing like my best books, the worst books, um, just ah, all the good memories. So that's what I'm gonna do today. Um, I will have a vlog coming very soon with Kelsifer and life updates and everything, but I don't think you'll see that until maybe, I think, Wednesday. Let's just get right into the tags if you want to. Please feel free to honestly just copy and paste the questions and your answers below because there's nothing more that I would like to do than sit with a cat on my lap and read um, your renditions of this tag as well. But let's start with the hardest question to answer probably, which is the best book you've read so far this year. Um, so far in 2022, I've read 70 something, or maybe it's just 70 books, which is cool. I've had maybe a solid handful of books, like five that have just been so, so, so good. And so this was so hard to pick from because like, there's a really solid group of books that are in my mind, but I think I did make myself narrow it down to one. And that is, I just think this is so phenomenal. I just want to thank you guys as well for continuously giving me recommendations giving me everything because this was a recommendation from you guys and a gift from one of you guys as well so thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you this was so good this takes the ghost story and like turns it into something that i am just so happy about because we follow this one guy who goes on a mission from his mother who is now dead it's like her last dying wish for him to go to this town where his father lives um and get a little bit of revenge on his father because their father walked out on them she had to raise Juan alone who is our protagonist and so he gets to this town and things are just it's a ghost town but a little bit of a different ghost town because it's not quiet you know there's not just tumbleweeds there during the night or at odd hours of the day maybe you've had a little bit too much to eat maybe the sun is really getting to you um, you can hear voices and whispers and essentially the town re-experiencing itself like coming out of the cracks but no one is there but you follow him kind of bopping around the town seeing what's going on trying to figure out what went wrong why the town is a ghost town like why has it been driven into such desolation essentially uh this book is also set between two timelines right because you have one in the present moment um dredging up the memories of the past and then you also get those flashes to the past kind of from the present moment i want to say so like there is a split timeline but it's a bit more nuanced and complicated no that is a chord it's a little bit more nuanced and complicated than that right i just thought this was so fantastic right look at this book look at that this was just so so good where are you going <laughs> calcifer calcifer okay well there's a cat on the back of my chair now um highly highly would recommend everything about this was so great sometimes it's super hard to tell who's talking but that's just like one of the wonders and puzzles of this book is that you kind of remake the town as the reader um figuring out who's who figuring out the bigger picture the bigger story and it was just so so good so good Mwah. loved it so much um so that is pedro paramo ah such a good one i do however also want to give a very honorable mention to season of migration to the north because that almost got top spot as well um and i would totally i think i did give that book five stars but yeah both of those so so good and then there is one more but that got another position in the list so oh i have to get the sequel he's hard at work he's my secretary the best sequel i've read this year is hands down Fortuna Sworn, book number four. This is Beautiful Nightmares, and it was a beautiful nightmare. I can confirm. I have been waiting to get my little goblin hands all over this book, um, and it came out this year, and yeah, this is just so good. I have not been reading many sequels, although for some reason this month, in the month of June, I've finished a series, and I'm already reading another sequel, so June seems to be the month where I'm actually doing it, but so far nothing has topped this this fourth book i just love the fortuna sworn series one of my favorite series if you do decide to start it um this is pretty much my advice to everyone because now i've got two of my best friends reading it and i'm just i'm like yes i'm so happy i'm like please read it with me um but if you don't like the first book just keep going because i'm not a huge fan of the first one um i honestly think like each one just gets better and better and better and this one was just so good this is now my favorite in the series as well and it does not feel it does not feel at all like um almost 700 pages like it just absolutely 
flies by so that is beautiful nightmares it, just such a good sequel such a good sequel i love absolutely everyone in this book the characters are just i don't know this book just feels this book and the series and the characters really do just feel like family now so that is that one what's in your mouth calcifer okay next question uh, a new release that i want to read that has come out this year but that i haven't yet read uh, I really did not have any aside from Beautiful Nightmares, but I will say that I have had my eye for a little bit on Anatomy, a love story, because I keep hearing about this on booktube. If you've read this, do I read it or do I not read it? Okay. Um, anticipated release for the second half of the year? None. I don't care. Um, it's very windy today. I think there's almost, I think there's going to be a tornado warning or something. I have a lot of, I mean, old releases that I want to get to, so yeah. Okay, my biggest surprise this year, I'm just gonna <laughs> show you it. It shocked us all, really it did, and that is The Kingdom of Little Wounds by S Susan Kokel. Um, if you know, you know, that's all I'm gonna say. This book was a surprise, let me just say. Okay, next up, my new favorite author. I just finished this book, so this is, this is very, um, you know, jumping on the bandwagon for me, but I will probably read anything this man reads, and particularly so because this is his debut novel. So for this one, I'm gonna say Thomas Wharton, um, because Icefields, this almost got the top spot as well, but this is one of my favorite books now. So good, five stars. I found this in Banff and I guess it was just meant to be. I'm so happy it was there and it just like, I don't know, it's so special to me now, equally special because I found it on, you know, my trip and it was just so lovely. So I finished this, adored this, highly recommend. If you are maybe turned off by the fact that it's kind of like historical fiction, I would say don't be because while this book is set between the years of 1898 to shortly after the First World War, the historical fiction aspect of it is very not there. It doesn't feel like a lot of other historical fiction I read, which has pretty much turned me off of the genre for right now, but this is like nothing, nothing like that. And the structure of this book as well um, both mimics and mirrors the landscape and the geology um, that is so prevalent in this book, but also kind of reads like a very clever literary tour, tour guide or tour plan pamphlet almost in certain sections. Um, Okay, we're gonna get blown away, Kelsfer. The very basic premise is that Dr. Byrne falls into a crevice of ice on a glacier, and while he's down there, he sees something. He sees something in the ice, and this thing haunts him because he obsessively returns to Jasper, Alberta, which is a national park. Um, I don't think it was actually, was it a national park by then? No, um, no, it wasn't. Um, he obsessively returns to Jasper each summer because as the glacier recedes, right, as the glacier melts, it leaves behind things that were stuck in the ice and that it had accumulated for who knows how many years and so he's waiting till this thing that he sees kind of gets released from the ice so it's all about ice as time ice as memory ice as the holder of the repressed you know and the return very much literally the literal return of the repressed <laughs> and like geology as as your mind and as yourself, but also just like blunt geology, just geology as geology and mountains and rocks and ice, um, right? He's just sitting under the tripod staring at me. Well, there's also so many symbolic things to talk about. There's also just such a, a appreciation for nature and it is also a piece of eco-criticism. Um, it also talks about colonialism in Canada, especially in Alberta during the early 1900s, what was going on there. It also flashes back further than 1898 actually because Byrne starts to collect stories of everyone who has become obsessed with this glacier even in times not his own because there are a bunch of people obviously in Alberta either looking to profit or finding solitude or working. Glaciers creep like snakes that watch their prey. It even quotes Shelley so I feel like this book has has everything. My newest crush? This one is so sad because I don't have one. Okay a book that made me cry was volumes two and three of Heartstopper. Um, both for different reasons, both very happy, um, wholesome crying, wholesome tears, but then also like very just like bullet to the heart tears. Do you know what I mean? One that's made me very happy, um, I have a video coming all about this tomorrow, is Kitchen Princess, the manga. She's also trying to find the flan prince because there was a boy at her orphanage um, in Hokkaido who made her or who gave her flan and she smiled again after a really long time and so uh, her goal is to find him by tracking down the school that's like attached to 
um, the memento that he left her, which was a silver spoon with a school crest on it. And so that's the whole reason why she goes to the school is to find him. She wants to bake him the perfect dessert. So yeah, this was just so, so, so fun, so wholesome. There's so many friendships in here. There's of course this whole romance aspect, but that really wasn't the focus of the story. The focus was just on Najika's like love and positivity. Um, and just really wholesome relationship to food. Um, and it just really made me want to cook more, even though I don't like cooking. And I'm not very good at it, which you will see tomorrow, <laughs> um, to my great shame and embarrassment. So yeah, I would highly recommend if you're looking for something as a pick-me-up, if you're in a reading slump, if you just want to smile, um, and this does also discuss more serious topics around food. If you're shaking, it's because Calcifer has the leg of the tripod in his mouth and is shaking you. The next question is the most beautiful book. I might have even said The Ice Palace last year, but this is just so, so good. I love this cover. I also think XOXO by Axio has a gorgeous cover, but unfortunately I did not like this book at all, but I still really like the cover art. And then finally, books that I want to read before the year runs out. I picked four, which I think is quite a good solid number. So first off, we have Grendel by John Gardner. I got this book a couple of years ago and um, I'm just so excited to read this book. This is basically a reimagining of Grendel, who is from Beowulf and who is, I think most people argue, the first monster in English literature, but it um, reimagines his life. What I'm really excited for is that Grendel is pretty much a character in the reader's mind like Frankenstein's creature. He's never really given like a complete form. You don't really know what he looks like. At times he's large enough to scoop up 30 men <laughs> and run away and eat them, but of course he's also able to be taken down by the Viking warrior Beowulf and have like his hand nailed above their stronghold and their hall. Um, and he's just such an interesting character. I think he's done really dirty, although to be fair he does just glory in the gore and glut on the uh, corpses of the soldiers. So um, yeah, I'm just so, so excited to see inside his mind. I, I've heard this is so good. So that is the first one. I also really want to get to The Blind Owl. This is probably, I think this is going to be a new favorite book. Um, I'm so excited to read this because one of my favorite books from last year, Untold Night and Day, it led me to believe it was not so much the story, but I think the form and what it was doing and the like structure of the book was very much inspired by The Blind Owl. This is banned in I don't know how many countries or if it currently is or not, um, but all I know is that it's about a man's descent into madness, I think. Um, it's not very long at all and I really, really want to get to this before the year runs out. I think this is going to be so, so, so good. So cool. So that is that one. And then finally, the last two, we have A Tale for the Time Being. This one I just saw on my shelf. I haven't thought about this book in a while, but I really do want to get to this because, again, I think this could be a new favorite. It's about um, a diary that washes up after the 2011 tsunami. So the diary goes from Japan and eventually gets all the way to Vancouver by this woman named Ruth, which is also really interesting because, of course, the author's name is Ruth, so I really want to see what's going on there. Um, reads this young schoolgirl's diary from Japan. And yeah, this just sounds like heartbreaking, heart-wrenching. I think there's a lot more going on though. I'm not sure if there's fantasy elements or not, but that is that one. And then finally, the last one, I do really want to get to The House of the Spirits by Isabel Allende, especially because I'm gonna be rereading 100 Years of Solitude in July. I feel like I'm gonna save that for uh, maybe the couple weeks leading up to my birthday as like a, just a nice treat to myself. And then I may probably not read this at the same time, although, hold on one damn second. Calcifer. That's really cool. I did not notice that until this very second. Um, probably not read it at the exact same time because I think that could be a lot and get maybe a little bit confusing, but definitely probably right after 100 Years of Solitude um, because they are quite similar stories. Like we do have um, a house and a family who I think we follow through a bunch of generations. So those are the books that I want to read for the rest of the year and so many more of course but thank you so much for joining me on the mid-year book book freak out tag this has been so good Kelsifer is now wrestling with my sloth um what are they called slippers so thank you so much for always throwing books at me even though that's kind of it's kind of my job but it's kind of like a little ecosystem you know we feed off of each other so yeah I also just wanted to say a grand thank you in general for supporting this channel and supporting me because it's been just such a dream come true like 
every few days I'm like, wow, I get to do this. I will see you in my next video, which is gonna be tomorrow. <laughs> you have such a good day and I will see you then. Ciao.